In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship in the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters in Christ, on this rainy October morning, let us give thanks to God for the change of seasons, knowing that it's almost like a rehearsal, knowing that a time of rest comes and then new life comes in the springtime. And so it's like also, as we are pilgrims here on earth, we are going through a time preparing ourselves for passing from this life to eternal life someday. Also, let us recognize our sins. <clears throat> Kyrie God, may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command so that we may merit what you promise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, you shall not molest or oppress an alien if you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If you ever wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up and I will kill you with the sword. Then your own wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors amongst my people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset, for his cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we were among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all the believers. In Macedonia and in Achaia, for from you, the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and in Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us 
what sort of reception we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to await his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks be to God. God. be in your heart and on your lips, you may worthily announce his holy gospel. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, what commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, o Lord Jesus Christ. Once when Jesus was in Jerusalem with his disciples, some Greeks who were visiting Jerusalem came up to Philip the Apostle and asked, Sir, we should like to see Jesus. And just like the Greeks then, non-Christians now, that is, the world, makes the same request of us every day of our lives. We should like to see Jesus. You see, the world rightly expects that they will see Jesus in how his disciples live their lives. If the incredible things we believe are true, if Jesus really did die on the cross and rise again from the dead to redeem and sanctify us, then they are completely justified in expecting that a people who have been made holy will stand for something different than the world that we will act and behave differently. The language we use won't be the same coarse language and cursing that has tragically become acceptable in private as well as in public. We will help the poor and the downtrodden. We will love our enemies in a way that many don't even love their closest friends and family. They will see that we value above all the spiritual and eternal and that we bring those same values down to earth, as it were, to guide us in temporal affairs. 
They will undoubtedly see that we are not perfect, and they don't expect us to be. But they do keep hearing Christians talk about grace and the sacraments and rightly expect to see some evidence that they are working in our lives. You see, when we live what we believe, not only our words, but our very lives evangelize those around us. The essential message of the readings today is twofold. First, that we are not to live like everyone else. And second, what we do here on earth matters. There are things that we must do, love God and neighbor, and things that we must not do, act unjustly towards those over whom we have authority, power, and influence. But if we seek the same things the world does, if we grasp at what is earthly and temporal rather than seek what is spiritual and eternal, if we live like everyone else, this can't be called evangelization. It's more like inoculation. Inoculating everyone who sees us with Christian antibodies, if you will. They may continue looking for Jesus in our lives for a while, but eventually they'll conclude he isn't there. They may well wonder whether he ever was. It's curious, but the world and our Lord are very much alike in one respect. They can both see hypocrisy a mile away, and they both hate it. Voting for the current election concludes in a little bit over a week. And by voting, we have an opportunity to let that which is spiritual and eternal guide us in our temporal affairs. We have an opportunity to be a bold witness for life by voting no on issue one. As Catholics, we've been known for a long time by all that we are among those who stand for life. But whatever the outcome of the election, God is still in charge, whether our government is, or culture is godly or godless. Whichever is the case, our hope and salvation lies in him alone, not in who or who does not hold a particular office, not in who or who does not wield temporal power. Nevertheless, some in our culture and even within the church herself insist that faith has no place in the public forum. It's okay to be religious in church and in the privacy of our own homes, so they say, but we must not dare live out our faith in public, or worse yet, let faith guide our public actions. St. Paul and St. John once encountered a similar situation when the political and religious leaders of their day tried to silence them as they proclaimed the gospel. They told these leaders, whether it is right in the sight of God to obey you rather than God, you be the judge. We too will face opposition when our faith guides our moral, economic, and political choices. And whether it is right in the sight of God to stand against our increasingly immoral culture or keep quiet, you be the judge. But the fact is we are obligated as members of the church to, quote, shape the moral character of society as part of the mission given to us by Christ himself, unquote. So says our Archbishop and all the bishops of the United States, the successors of the apostles, of whom Jesus said, he who hears you, hears me. In the U.S. Bishop's document, Forming Consciences for Faithful Citizenship, they have said that living out, living out Christ's command to love means bringing truth to political life. Pope Benedict XVI in his encyclical God is Love said that love must be part of every aspect of our lives, including our political activity. This means our moral convictions take precedence over any party affiliation and any special interest group. So how do Catholics responsibly participate in the political process? 
The first and most fundamental step is to form our consciences in accordance with the truth, which means learning how to recognize right from wrong, something we lost the ability to do in some degree when Adam and Eve decided they knew better than God. According to the Catechism, we learn right from wrong by listening to the Word of God through the witness and advice of virtuous people and by the authoritative teaching of the Church. We are then bound to incorporate that knowledge into our lives through faith and prayer and put that knowledge into practice. Jesus said in the Gospel today that the entirety of the Law and the Prophets is summed up in the command, love God and love your neighbor. And the words of our Lord are echoed in the constant teaching of the Church and the U.S. Bishop's document I mentioned. These, there are some things we can never do, whether as an individual or as a society, because they are always opposed to love of God and neighbor. Such acts are intrinsically evil and can never be affirmed or supported. Abortion is a timely example given the current election. Several years ago, the bishops of Denver issued a statement on abortion, which I quote, abortion kills an unborn developing human life. It is always gravely evil, and so are the evasions employed to justify it. Catholics who make excuses for it, whether they are famous or not, fool only themselves and abuse the fidelity of those Catholics who sincerely seek to follow the gospel and live the Catholic faith." Unquote. The right to life is the most fundamental right, the most preeminent right, because without it, no other rights are possible. Treating human beings as mere objects through abortion, through so-called mercy killing, human cloning and destructive research on human embryos, that is, on a person in the embryonic stage of life, is also intrinsically evil. The current election is of immense importance. The choices we make will affect each one of us, our families, our children, and our state for years to come. Our sacred duty, yours and mine, is to form our consciences in the light and truth of the constant teaching of the Church and to live out our faith in every aspect of our lives, thereby transforming our culture into one that seeks above all else virtue, holiness, and God. It is in this way that those who should like to see Jesus actually will in those who profess to believe in him. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, 
the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, come substantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For as men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. I confess in one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Called to love in the Church, love our neighbor as ourselves. Let us bring our needs and the needs of those around us before our loving God. For all leaders in the Church, may the Lord continue to strengthen them and bless them in their ministry, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may God grant them wisdom and courage in attending to and protecting the most vulnerable, especially the unborn, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are marginalized and in need, may God bless them with abundance and provision, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may the Lord open our hearts to receive His love so we can generously serve others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the poor souls in purgatory, especially those who have no one else to pray for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parishioners of Emmanuel, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those serving in the military, especially those in harm's way, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in Israel, we pray to the Lord. For those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts and those written in our book of St. Monica. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, you sent your only Son into the world to enlighten our hearts and fill us with hope and faith. Hear our prayers, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Would you go to the sacrament to get me a little bit of water? Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, fruit of the land and the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, we see the sacrifice that we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Me of my iniquities, cleanse me of all of my sins. Thank you. Pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We 
lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord, for by your word you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son, you gather men and women whom you have made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the, sal with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore, now and for all ages unending, with all the angels, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. I need a drink. Oh, 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 yes. <clears throat> You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walks with us in the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for his disciples, so now for us. He opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for their forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <clears throat> mm. 
Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whom, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit, that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion, together with Francis our Pope and Dennis our Bishop, with all the bishops, with priests and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all of the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection Give them the, <clears throat> the fullness of life. Grant also to us, whom, when, our mirthly, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, with Saint Joseph, with St. Rita, with St. Paul, St. Gaspar, and Maria de Matias, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son, through him, with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be with each one of you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Let us do the peace of Christ be with you. The peace of Christ be with you. The peace of Christ. 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 Peace of Christ. The peace of Christ. Jesus Christ, not bring me to condemnation, to judgment, through your loving mercy, protection, mind and body, and healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. <clears throat> the body of Christ. 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 body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The 
body of Christ. That body of Christ. That body of Christ. That body of Christ. Amen. That body of Christ. Amen. body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. <coughs> body of Christ the 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 body of Christ body of Christ the body of Christ the body of Christ the body of Christ the body of Christ Amen. A body of Christ. Amen. A body of Christ. A body of Christ. Body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. Body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. of Christ. The body of Christ. <clears throat> the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. 
the body of Christ. The body of Christ. <clears throat> The body of Christ. 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 Amen. The body of Christ. <coughs> The body of Christ. 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 The body of Christ.
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs, may, we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. November 1st is the Feast of All Saints, a holy day of obligation. A vigil mass for all saints will be celebrated here at Emmanuel on Tuesday, October 31st at 5.15 p.m. Due to the vigil mass, the miraculous medal novena normally held on Tuesday is canceled for this week. On November 1st, the Feast of All Saints Day will be celebrated at Emmanuel at 7.30 a.m. Please check the bulletin for Holy Day Mass times at other parishes. Please join us at Emmanuel for a holy hour during a 24-hour vigil adoring and worshiping our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. The vigil will begin with solemn exposition on Monday, November 6th at 8 p.m. and end at the conclusion of the Miraculous Medal Novena at 8 p.m. on Tuesday, November 7th. Sign up is not required but is helpful so that we know all the time slots are covered. Please see page five in today's bulletin for information on how to sign up. And finally, on Saturday, November 4th, Holy Trinity will be holding their holiday bazaar from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Trinity Center. St. Paul will also be holding its annual holiday bazaar from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at St. Paul that same day. And as you know, the elections are coming very soon. Let us pray for Ohio. Ever-living God, you give life and desire a future for all your children. Take hold of our nation, state, and community, and awaken in every heart ah, for the gift of life. Send your spirit to strengthen us with wisdom and fortitude as we defend mothers and children in Ohio from laws that disregard their health and safety. Mary and Joseph trusted in you and welcome Jesus into our broken world. Father, we ask their intercession to protect the preborn and their mothers and to guide all parents in raising their children May they keep us, may they help us build a civilization of love by upholding the sacredness of life, preserving parental rights, and accompanying pregnant women in need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lady, Mother of the Family, pray for us. St. Joseph, Protector of the Unborn, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, descend upon you, be with you today and always. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.
Thank you. 